My wife and I have followed Jordan Peterson on social media for several years. We've actually attended his lecture locally about a year ago when he came to St. Louis. We appreciate his encouragement for young men. It's really hard on young men today. They are so attacked and beaten down. We believe this is an attack from Satan. I've been concerned for Jordan. Uh, I saw him get choked up several times when discussing Christ. I just recently saw a snippet on uh, the Babylon Bee where Pastor Jack Hibbs talks about Jordan Peterson. And uh, Jack shared the same concerns I have. Just knowing about Jesus doesn't mean being born again and having him the center of your life and have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we definitely need making the Lord of our life have the presence of the Holy Spirit in us in these end times. As the commentator on the Babylon Bee went on to quote Second Timothy, the verse is, having a form of godliness but denying the power therein. And that's our concern for Jordan as he's attacked, as he's out in the battles doing this in his own intellect, in his own strength, that he will be eventually overcome And we're already seeing signs that that moment of softness of his heart where the Holy Spirit was working on him is seems to be diminishing. We we wanted, and the reason for this video is please pray for all these people that are on the verge of becoming Christians where you could see the Holy Spirit working on them, but they have never completed the transaction of being born again and going to the point of making Jesus Christ the ongoing Lord of their lives. And I would put Elon Musk and Jordan Peterson both in this category of people to pray for. We actually have a whole wealth of people that we come in contact with daily in our lives to share the gospel with. I just wanted to mention Jordan because um, there's a little connection with the University of Toronto uh, and his professorship there. I became very aware of Jordan uh, during the truckers' protest in Ottawa I had pastors on the ground that I knew that were up there during that protest. And seeing Trudeau come against the move of God among some of those truckers and what was happening was really frightening. And that's when I uh, started to be banned on some social media platforms by calling out the narrative that our news media was putting out about racism, misogyny, and yet the crime rate there in Ottawa was extremely low, if non-existent, during the truckers' protest. And I realized the danger of the times that we're living in. I appreciated Jordan's standing up and fighting against that uh, tyrannical leadership they have across Canada and their media. And that was the time that I really woke up that my Canadian brothers were in a deep, deep battle just like we are. I have decided to include uh, excerpts from that Babylon B interview with Jack Hibbs, showing Jack Hibbs' thoughts on Jordan Peterson. I've also decided to include excerpts of an interview where Jordan gets choked up contemplating and discussing Christ. And again, pray for Jordan Peterson, but the Lord gives us daily opportunities of those around us that we can pray for. It was been just, Jordan's been on my heart and mine lately And I thought that this was particularly timely. So I may never get a chance to tell Jordan Peterson the truth. But Jordan Peterson went from not believing in God to all of us watched his evolution in social media of his struggles and and his breaking. And it's as though he got so close and then I notice, I've noticed in the last, because I'm watching him and I'm praying for him, I've noticed in the last few months, there's been a hardening and almost a cynicism to Jordan Peterson and a, a spirituality that's there, but it's without the person of Jesus Christ. Mm. And he seems to be now, it's almost like something that's re-entering the atmosphere, but it's got the wrong trajectory and it skips out into space. Jordan Peterson's genius brilliant. But he better make a decision about Jesus quick, because I don't know how much time he might have to play with the idea. Jordan's brilliant, but he's not God. Jesus is the one. And his spirituality 
could actually work against him if he doesn't yeah. seal the deal with Jesus himself personally. There's a, there's a representation of, there's a historical representation of his, of, of his existence as well. Now you can debate whether or not that's genuine. You can debate about whether or not he actually lived and whether there's credible objective evidence for that, but it doesn't matter in some sense because this, well, it does, but there's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that. But I don't know, okay. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't understand it. Like, because I've seen, sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch, you know, that's union synchronicity. Yeah. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, and that seems to me oddly plausible. Yeah. But well, I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, it, partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it.